Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about infinite banking or what some might call banking on yourself. There's also other terms for this. Those are the two that I've heard the most. Uh, and so this is not going to be in depth. I'll probably do more videos on this where I explain what infinite banking is, uh, what the concept is, what the predominant uh, idea and strategy is around uh, infinite banking or banking on yourself. This particular video is going to be more of just a quick rant uh, about this concept and the things that I think are horrific about the way it is sold and talked about. Okay, so the general concept of infinite banking or bank on yourself is banks are evil. They make money off of you. And why would you give them all your money when you can bank on yourself and pay yourself the money that you're paying to banks. I mean, the money you're paying to banks is interest. Uh, there's bank fees sometimes too, uh, but it seems like it's geared around interest. So the concept is banks are evil. Don't be tied to banks like the idiots who use banks are. Be smart, bank on yourself. How? Through whole life insurance. This is through an overfunded whole life insurance policy or cash value life insurance policy where you put your money into a life insurance policy instead of into the bank, build up your wealth and assets and cash value there within this life insurance policy, and then borrow from yourself. And not to go in depth on that, but borrow from yourself. Really, you're borrowing against, not even from your life insurance policy, but you're borrowing against your life insurance policy with it pledged as collateral, basically. Uh, but back to the general concept. Borrow from yourself, pay interest to yourself instead of to the bank, become wealthy, use this strategy, don't be an idiot. All right, so this is a good concept, be your own bank, uh, really not be your own bank, be your own lender, I think is a better concept for this um, than be your own bank. Because I mean, you're going to always have a need for a bank. In fact, one of the ones I was watching, this was actually, this guy was a little more balanced. I actually like this guy. Uh, I'll probably talk more about him in another video uh, and even link to one of his videos. Uh, but, but he actually believes in the infinite banking concept. But in a way that doesn't make me want to barf. Um, so anyway, the the whole idea here is just absurd that you would need a whole life insurance policy to do this. So for me, I think that the concept of being your own bank or being your own lender, again, which is a better term in my opinion, uh, is great. You know, it, it costs you to borrow money from other people. Uh, you go into debt, you're now a slave to that person in a way, uh, in terms of they have control over you having to pay them back. They're making money off of the fact that they lent you money. So it's costing you more than the actual thing that you spent that money on because you have to pay them interest and you have to pay it or they can come after you. Many times most debt is collateralized either by your house, like a mortgage or by your car for an auto loan. Um but they can come take that asset back if you don't make payments. Uh, loans that aren't collateralized, like credit card debt, they can still pound you and come after you. They can force you into bankruptcy. Uh, you are tied to having to pay this person back, not just what you borrowed, but that plus interest. So the idea to be able to build up money to be able to borrow from yourself is fantastic. So I'll say there are other ways to do this than the way that they pitch it. The pitch is the horrible piece of this, not necessarily the underlying concept, right? So there's elements that they don't tell you. Everything that I've seen is borrow, except for this one guy that I mentioned. Uh, I forget the name of his YouTube channel, but I will share it um, in a different video. But the predominant way I've seen this is that you. The stock market is not a good investment. Uh, banks are horrible and you shouldn't park your money there uh, because they're using you and they're evil. Uh, and that you should buy this whole life insurance policy, put your money into it to build up the cash value to then be able to use your money and pay yourself interest. 
I hear that every single time I've heard it. Pay yourself interest. And they even talk about, you know, setting your own interest rate for what you take that loan out and pay yourself back. So again, you've got this life insurance policy with cash value. So you're borrowing that, you're borrowing your own money, and then you're paying the interest back to yourself because they say, oh, you can, you know, you can set the interest rate for whatever you want. So since you're paying yourself the interest, why not make it 10%? So you're paying this loan 10% and you're paying yourself that interest. Well, the thing that they don't tell you is that there's always a cost, not to yourself, but there is a cost of borrowing money because when you borrow against your life insurance policy, you're not borrowing your own money. The whole point of the concept is your money stays invested within this life insurance vehicle because when you buy whole life insurance, the company invests it. They guarantee usually a rate of return, maybe 4%. Uh, and so your money is growing while it's there. And you can borrow against it, essentially pledging it as collateral. Uh, you know, hey, I've got $50,000 of cash value built up in this policy. Can I borrow $50,000 from you? and not touch my $50,000 so that it stays invested. That's the concept. They say, sure, here you go. The interest rate's 4%. You're paying them 4%. So when they sit there and they tell you banks are evil, they're making money off of you, and you have to pay them interest instead of yourself, buy this whole life insurance policy, all you've done is you've gone to a new bank, a different bank. Right, because you're not going to Wells Fargo to borrow the money. You're going to Whole Life Insurance Company A, and you're borrowing money from them. You're paying them interest. Yeah, the policies might allow you to set a higher interest rate so that you're paying seven percent total interest on that, four to them and three to yourself, which is stupid because the three percent you're paying to yourself is just money you're putting into the policy. So why set the interest rate higher? Why not just put the money into the policy? Um, but it's because it's all shrouded in this thing where they have to make it sound like you're the one making money. I, they're making money. They wouldn't be in business if they're not making money. And when you sit down, I, I went to an entire day. It was like 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. I was invited by somebody. It was free. I went. Uh, first red flag, their invitation said, do not invite your financial planner or CPA. This guy, I wasn't his CPA, but I was a friend. Uh, and he invited me. Uh, I didn't tell anyone while I was there that I was a CPA. I did ask some questions that they didn't answer. The biggest one that I was asking was about this interest rate. They never, ever said that you were paying interest to the life insurance company. I finally, through watching several YouTube videos, found one person who even just briefly mentioned that there's in, uh, interest here. And you know that there has to be. I mean, it just doesn't pass a logic test. No one's going to lend you money without charging interest. It's just they're not going to do it. It's stupid. They would go out of business. Also, this whole life insurance thing, you've got cash value of $200,000 and you've got a life insurance policy of a million dollars. When you die, that $200,000 is gone. You get the million dollar life insurance, sure. But the $200,000 of cash value that you built up and have been borrowing against, that's theirs. They, they keep it. They don't give you a million dollars plus your $200,000 of cash value that you built up. So essentially, you have an $800,000 life insurance policy because you've put $200,000 into it that they're going to keep. Uh, so you're not building an asset. That cash value is never your asset. It's the cost of the policy. Now, yes, in the meantime, before you die, you can borrow against that $200,000. But... A brokerage account will let you borrow against it and your money can stay invested. So you could put money in Charles Schwab, invest it in the stock market or mutual funds or ETFs or treasury bonds or whatever you want to that Schwab allows you to invest it in within a brokerage account. And you could take a loan pledging that brokerage account as collateral without having to be tied up in this life insurance policy uh, with this cash surrender value. and someone lying to you that you're not paying interest to anyone but yourself. That's the piece that gets me. It's not that this isn't a strategy that can work. It, it can, and it may be okay for some people to use this strategy. It may be the vehicle through which you want, but that is never the way I've heard it pitched. It's always banks are evil, invest here, be your own bank, pay yourself interest. They don't tell you that you're still paying them interest. It's, the, it's still a cost of borrowing the money. You could save, you know, you've got to put the money in. The cash value doesn't just come out of thin air. You've got to put the $100,000 into this policy to be able to borrow it. 
So if you're going to put the $100,000 in this cash life insurance policy to be able to borrow against it, why not put that $100,000 into the stock market or an ETF or a mutual fund and borrow against it? Why not just put it into a savings account and then borrow from yourself? Now, you're not going to be able to borrow it. You're going to have to take it out of the savings account in order to use it. So that, that's kind of the piece here that, that they're really going for is you don't have to take your money out. Um, but you could pledge that as collateral. I mean, there are personal loans. They have higher interest rates a lot of times, but there are other vehicles. You can put that $100,000 into a piece of real estate and then go take out a equity line against the real estate, pledging it as collateral and leave that money invested in the real estate, earning money uh, in that investment of real estate while borrowing uh, in a home equity line of credit to go use that money to deploy it somewhere else. The, the other piece of this too is they talk about, I mean, it's over and over again, like you're going to have car loans. So, you know, don't borrow the the car loan from the bank, borrow it from yourself. So you're going to go buy a $50,000 Lexus, borrow it from the, the life insurance policy and pay the interest back to yourself. You're still paying them interest. You still got a car loan. You still bought an asset that's going down in value while paying interest and more than what it ever cost you. It's just the way that they pitch it is just ridiculous. So that that's enough of my rant. Uh, if you haven't heard of this concept, it, you know maybe look it up. Go go look at it. I'm going to do a little bit more on kind of how it works and why it doesn't work. Uh, again, I'm I'm not fully throwing the strategy out as you know you're dumb if you use it. Just know that it is one vehicle. There are other ways to do the same concept without using whole life insurance. The, the other piece too I discovered, and actually even the guy whose YouTube channel I was watching tonight that I actually enjoyed a little bit the way he talked about it because he was very down to earth. He he didn't he actually disagreed with a lot of the way almost everything that I disagree with, he disagreed with on how this is sold to people. Uh, but he still promotes it and uses it and thinks it's a good idea, which again, I I don't necessarily think that's uh bad, but it's just one tool. And he he agreed with that. He said it's one tool, one vehicle uh to be able to to utilize this method. But the other piece of this that that just is ridiculous is that they all seem to be anti-stock market and not it's fine if you're anti-stock market too again like i said this guy who was pretty uh reasonable in terms of his pitch and and how he talked about this strategy i saw a video not even related to the um the bank on yourself uh infinite banking it was a it was a different video of his that i was watching where he he kind of just mentioned in brief, you know, I'm not a fan of the stock market. And I think that is the underlying kind of motivational piece of this particular strategy and why they use whole life insurance. That and everyone promoting it is a whole life insurance salesman. I think this guy is too. He he sells life insurance, whole life insurance policies specifically. And of course, they all say that if you don't do it perfectly, it's not going to work, which I believe is true. But of course, they all do it perfectly and they write the right kind of life insurance policy. So you need to use them to buy the life insurance policy. They're making money when they sell you the life insurance policy. The life insurance company is making money when they lend you the money at an interest rate that they're going to collect, not you. Uh, and they all are trying to scare you in terms of not investing in the stock market. Now, again, the whole life insurance policy, there, there can be, I think, a guaranteed rate of return. But you got treasury bills. You could open up a Schwab account, put your money in treasury bills or something uh, super conservative that's going to be basically a guaranteed rate of return and still leverage and borrow against that investment account. So you don't have to do it through whole life insurance, which is what they seem to say that you do. They're afraid of the stock market. They want you to believe that whole life insurance is the only option so they can make commissions off of you when they sell you the whole life insurance policy. And they want to lie to you about how it actually works, because if they told you how it actually worked, you're probably going to question if it's really worth it in the end. My name is Brad. I'm with Wooten CPA. My goal is to bring peace to your tax and accounting responsibilities. One of the ways I do that is through these videos here on YouTube. Please like uh, this video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with others. Thank you for watching.